I was contacted by Ace Magic again, and they asked me if I wanted to review another one of their mini PCs. I reviewed one a few weeks ago, and I actually really liked it. It was a nice, uh, nice mini PC. The more competitors there are on the market, the better, I say. And these guys had a really good product, actually. This, the model of this is called the S1, so it's the Ace Magic mini PC S1. In general, because they're cool and they're compact, and I think they're useful for a lot of people. Not everyone's looking for a super powerful desktop. They want something that has. Um, good specs, good power, but is, you know, portable. You know, you can use it as a mini PC, a NAS, whatever, uh, media emulation device, whatever, so. Yeah, we get our charger, I'm gonna need that. Oh, nice, it's just a straight up wall plug, so that'll be nice and easy to plug in. Just plug it into the wall and plug it into that. No uh, USB type needed, and a little wee HDMI. I don't actually need this right now, but we'll show you that. You know, a little wee HDMI. Um, I don't need that right now because I have an HDMI on my screen, but that's very convenient, especially the fact that it's a little bit shorter. I mean, you're probably going to have your mini PC next to your screen, so you can mount it to the back of your monitor. Some people do that. They like to mount their uh, mini PCs to the back of a monitor. That's cool. Let's see, put that over there. Okay, I'm not sure what this is. this rubber? Nice, like, shiny material there. I don't want to take that off yet until I figure it out. Um, so that's the top of the unit there. It's really unique looking. It's got, like, almost like a PS5 kind of design where it's got, you know, the plastic piece and it's got some accessories on it. Attention to detail. I mean, these things look nice. We have, uh, I'm not sure which is intake, which is exhaust, but we have one vent there with a radiator inside. You can see that. Another one on that side there. Ventilation, there's the LCD on that side. And then on the back here, we have a decent IO here. Uh, so we have our DC power in. Dual HDMI on this, so you can run two screens. Uh, dual ethernet, so I mean, the, this is already pointing towards being like, you know, potentially for NAS or something like that. The fact that it has, you know, dual Ethernet there. Um, I'm going to be using it for other purposes, but that's fine. Auxiliary in, so speakers. Uh, lockdown. Four USBs here, so you have two of the slower ports, two of the faster ports, you know, if you're running like an external NVMe or something like that. I don't actually know. Oh, oh, it's magnetized. Okay, so that was way easier than I anticipated. That's actually a nice little magnetic because there's an arrow. Literally just magnetic, so you just, you know, go like that. That comes off. It's got a nice, cool little uh, screen on it, so you're going to be able to see the components inside. That's very cool. And here's the internals. Single RAM on this one here, not a dual stick. Uh, again, this is not, this model here is not like a heavy gaming machine. Um, that's not the purpose of this one. This one is going to be used for more for like media use, day-to-day -day desktop experience, and especially things like NAS, um, or, you know, if you're going to be using this as a storage type device here, I'd say this is very effective as a media unit here. So you don't need, you know, super fast dual channel RAM in a device that really you're going to be using for productivity, you know, desktop uh, productivity type tasks, um, you know, Word, Excel spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff. You don't need, you know, 64 gigabytes of dual channel memory, it's overkill. Um, but you're gonna want memory, you're gonna want lots of memory. So this has 16 gigabytes, um, or media, right? If you're gonna be loading up a media. And the reason that I say media for this here is it has dual NVMe. So, you know, a lot of times these devices, you know, almost well, everyone I've ever seen, to be honest, has single NVMe inside. So you're gonna get one storage and then you, you potentially get like a, you know, a SATA drive option. So you can stick in a SATA drive. But the prices of SATA versus NVMe's are the same these days. There's no difference in price, at least not really. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, check out what we have here. Um, it's actually good RAM, Lexar, so it's not off-brand or anything like that. So we get a 16 gigabyte stick, 3200 megahertz, that's fine. For let's see what we get here. So uh, probably just like a third-party brand, yeah. Buy one, don't know what it is, but it's fine. Uh, let's take it apart, because that's the fun part here. Basically just took out the bottom there. And uh, on the back side here we have uh, it's basically just some chips in that, your CMOS battery, so if you need to change that down the road, that's where it is there. And there's your fan, basically you just slapped on there, so you got co nice copper heat sink there, uh, heat pipe there. Um, more copper on the bottom there, and decent sized ventilation there, so you're going to move a lot of air. And that'll actually work as a heat sink too. Very cool. And then, oh, that's magnetized. Oh, that's cool. I don't know, I'm just... Like that. So you can see the specs on the machine though here. We get an Intel N95, that's a 12th gen Intel, that's a 12th gen Intel, kind of a lower power type processor, but it is quad core. So you can see there, you know, it is legitimately a quad core processor. Okay, uh, let's check if there's bloat on this. It's a weird thing to have on Windows. Whatever. Ignore it. 
Um, so yeah, this is all just Windows crap here. I mean, you can always just reinstall Windows if you want. Um, I'm not seeing any like bloat on it. Yeah, there's like no, it's a like, very slimmed down Windows. There actually is, is no bloat on it um, versus a lot of Windows software that's just loaded full of crap um, when you get it. This is like the most streamlined Windows I've ever seen. Okay, we'll just run some 4K video playback here. This is just whatever, generic um, Samsung thing. We'll check the CPU usage. Yeah, it's like not even a, that high. It'll spike up and down, but yeah, you can see there, I'll let that play. Play 4K video while doing browsing the internet. And there's lots of, lots of overhead here. here you know no issues nice and snappy I have 4k video playing there um, you know I'm able to go into this kind of stuff here um, this is kind of what you're gonna be using this lap desktop for is productivity stuff it's not you know a high-end gaming machine or anything like that so you know you're probably going to be running you know video maybe watching some Netflix or something like that on the side over here um, you can see here I mean no issues playing 4K video. So, you know, if you just need a little media box, put it underneath your TV or something like that, you know, stream Netflix, Disney, whatever, 4K YouTube, whatever it is that you watch. I mean, it's great. I mean, it has no issues with that whatsoever. I mean, uh, but we'll just check, you know, the temperatures mainly and see how they, uh, how they go here. Again, not a very hot chip, so it shouldn't really get that hot overall. Um, you can see here, I don't, it's just not hot, right? 61 degrees max, um, 62, like it's just not a hot PC. So, you know, you're not gonna have any issues with just running this thing and you're not gonna worry about heat or anything like that. Still a, quite a capable CPU actually. Um, you can get that in laptops and that's an i7 uh, 11th gen processor. Um, I've used that many times. I'm surprised this is doing so well. I mean, it's such a low wattage CPU. Like you can see here, we're not running at high watts. We're running at 15 watts, which is nothing really. And uh, it's only a four core, no thread, so it's just four core on its own. And uh, we're a little bit below this 11th gen um, i7. So that's actually better than I thought. I mean, again, this is not a 4K editing powerhouse, but you can do a lot with that actually, to be all honest. Okay, and here's the speed of the included NVMe. So it's not bad, I mean, it's not super fast or anything like that. It's faster than a SATA drive, slower than you know high end uh, third gen, uh, totally fine. I mean, you're not gonna have any issues using this as your boot drive. It's gonna be nice and snappy. So I would actually, because this has two slots, I would just leave the primary one as this here uh, because this is gonna be more than enough for a day-to-day -day operating system. It's gonna be quite fast. Um, and then for the second slot, I would throw in like a larger bulk NVMe. Okay, and here's a look at the Wi-Fi. So you can see here, it's nice, fast Wi-Fi, 500, just shy of 500 megabytes a second download, just shy of 400 uploads. So nice and quick, no issues there. Um, so it has good Wi-Fi, the ping is good. So, I mean, yeah, it's good, good Wi-Fi on this device here. Yeah, I mean, you can see the ethernet here. This is as fast as my ethernet can go. I have gigabit ethernet. It runs at a thousand megabytes a second as max. Typically I get about 930, 940. Um, so obviously the ethernet is fast on this because we're getting extremely high speeds, gigabit ethernet. So you can see there, that's the end result there. You can see extremely fast internet. CPU is going up to hundred percent or so up and down for Windows updates. Let's see how noisy this is. Thirty-six. Just so you know, my like room floor sound is like 34, 33. This is not the quietest room. So I just had Windows boot up here, and uh, you can see here that they have this QR code, basically telling you that you know they've pre-installed this LED control software. But you know if you lose it or you reinstall Windows, uh, you can just scan this QR code and they'll provide it to you again. But look at this. It's got this cool little display here in North America. Uh, the date is actually uh, right, which is interesting. Um, power, so we're using seven watts on the machine itself on the CPU, that's cool. I wanna see if that goes up when I start doing things. CPU temp, 48 degrees, we'll check if that's correct. CPU load, 17, fan speed, CPU load, P CPU load is basically nothing. So you can see there that I'm uh, doing things with the LED. So you can go auto, you can make it rainbow, you can make it breathing. That's breathing, it's like kind of pulsing, rainbow. Makes a rainbow pattern, color cycle, just goes full color and then it changes. You can turn it on off. You can make it brighter or darker. I can make it uh, dimmer. Yeah, so this is just this, uh, oops, this is just this tool here. It allows you to customize things. It actually went down and docked itself down here. 
Um, so you can bring that up, a different one. So that one has CPU power over there, centered clock up there. This one here has the wattage big in the middle of the clock there. Uh, this one here has a big clock in the middle. So you can see here, this one here has a big clock in the middle here. Um, yeah, and it actually reflects the screen there, obviously. All right, and then rotate, let's hit OK. You're gonna potentially lie this down like that, right? So so if I'm gonna, you know, tuck this under my, uh, my thing there, or, you know, if you put this near your TV and you tuck it underneath your TV and you just wanna be able to see all your stats there, whatever, however you want to orient it, you can make it horizontal. So there's like these default ones, this is like a cactus. Um, is that, oh, you can move them. Okay, so clock in the middle, memory load, CPU wattage, and you can turn off ones that you don't want. That's like a amoeba type thing, I don't know. Yeah, there it is, that's cool. It's actually not bad resolution too. Let's zoom in there. It's not like the finest resolution in the world, but it's actually a tiny little screen. It actually looks pretty good, especially from how far away it is. And then it looks like there's a customize option here. Loving. But you can see here, yeah, you can customize it however you want. So now I have like a cool sunset that came with Windows. Okay, now we'll do a little bit of emulation here, just in RetroWarp. So we'll just start with uh, some basic systems and 64. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with my 64. I think I just crapped a random core or whatever, but it's fine. Uh, it seems to be running fine. I mean, it's just not really gonna be that challenging for this to play N64, um, obviously. Yep, so N64 works fine. I mean, no issues here whatsoever. Okay, we'll do a little bit of PSP here. Again, I'm not, I don't have any shaders or anything or anti-aliasing, just kind of proof of concept here to show that it works. So uh, if you throw on some shaders and that, and some anti-aliasing, it'll look better, but I mean, obviously it's working just fine. No issues here. So you're not gonna have any issues playing you know, N64. You're not gonna have any issues playing PSP, like at all. Um, these are well within the realm of this uh, CPU, APU here. But uh, just get an idea of how this plays. So, I mean, obviously this device is, I mean, it's not a gaming PC, but for things like emulation, it's actually quite good. I mean, emulation relies more on the CPU than GPU. So, you know, the fact that this doesn't have the most powerful GPU built into the chip isn't a big deal if you're going to be playing things from PSP era, N64, GameCube, Dreamcast, this kind of thing. It's going to be totally fine. Okay, and this is their website here. I've been to this website before because I looked at one of the other PCs. Um, you can see here, apparently there's a 20% off coupon right there. Um, new members get 20% off, veteran members. So you get 20% off regardless, at least right now. Um, so that's the device right there. Um, two different options you can see here. Um, make sure you check the description in the video. I They actually have a coupon that's gonna be active when I publish this video uh, uh, that they sent over to me for you guys to have a look at. So you know, have a look at the video description down the bottom. Um, you can get that coupon and throw it on here and get even a better deal. Uh, but you know, if you're looking at this video in the future after that, and that coupon expires, potentially I might have new ones coming in the future if they send them over, who knows. Also, I mean, if you're looking at their stuff, check it out. Um, this is the one I reviewed before, uh, the 11800H. It was quite a good mini PC, actually. It had a really good cooling in it. So check it out. Um, the coupon isn't necessarily just for this specific item. It's, I think it's for their whole site. Okay, so that uh, wraps up the review of this. So what do I think about the little Ace Magic uh, mini PC? I like it just as much as the other one they sent me. They all previously sent me you know, a much larger mini PC with a little bit more power. It was an 11800H, that was great actually. And this is great for what it is too. It's a very, very small mini PC. You know, If I zoom out here, you can see it's really, really quite tiny. It runs nice and cool, it runs nice and quiet. The performance is good. I mean, it's an N95. I mean, if you know what those Intel processors do, you know what they're capable of. It's gonna be really, really good for media because you know you get good amount of RAM, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's gonna be really good for you know multitasking productivity and that. And it's a quad core processor. So you're not gonna have issues, you know, running like 4K video while doing, you know, document editing and coding and that kind of stuff. You'll be totally fine. Um, one of the biggest benefits is it has dual NVMe. So the first one, you can leave your operating system on that, probably wouldn't even upgrade it. But then you have that 
second slot there, which is awesome because then you can throw in like probably a bulkier, you know, four terabyte drive or something like that, throw that in there. And this could just be a media streaming device. You know, you can put this underneath your TV. You can use obviously, you know, it has really fast Wi-Fi and really fast uh, ethernet. So you can obviously use that to stream, you know, Netflix, Disney, whatever you watch nice and fast but of course you know if you have videos you can actually put them on this storage here and have that as like a basically a video server as well